this is the 24th day. <laughs> this is pretty cool. This is very cool. This is very, very cool. We're, for those of you who are new, welcome. Thanks for coming out and uh, sharing your day with me. And for those of you who've been here for a while, well done. Because this has been long. And we're about to wrap it up. Because after today, there's six more days. And I don't know if I'm going to do them continuously next week because a lot of people got behind and some other people were like, well, and some of these tasks are taking longer, but I haven't made that decision yet. I will let you know, but we'll, the full 30 days, because essentially where we are is there's after the day, there'll be 24 days in the queue, the queue being the 30 days to $2,500 Facebook group, which is a paid group. But if you start it today, in the day being the what is this the 13th of March you wouldn't finish what's done in the group by the 13th of April it's not going to happen there's too much going on there so that's one of the reasons I'm thinking about slowing it down but I may not don't know but just letting you know I sent out a link and I'll send it out before I go if you want to join the group so with that let's jump into it if you're new here, this is the way that I do my presentations. I'll do the presentation per first and I'll do a Q&A after with some of the task objectives. You'll need a sheet of paper, pen or pencil and a calendar because some of these things you can't do in a day. Uh, the first leg, which was days one through ten, you could do that stuff pretty quickly. Uh, the second leg days, wow, you know, eleven through twenty. It got a little bit more complicated and these are more involved the first legs were designed to get you used to action because this is this is the thing and i'll tell you the secret to success is very 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 simple get up and do something and keep doing it until you figure out that it doesn't work then start doing something that does work and don't stop till you figure those things out that's it it's not real sexy i know it's like people want that story i was in the kitchen and the angel of good fortune came in and hit me on my forehead with her magic wand and i was blessed ever since then <clears throat> it doesn't work like that also we believe in affirmations here i need your word i pledge to make myself better today than i was yesterday day by day i will become the hustler i know i can be i am all in let's just get into day 24 we're just gonna jump into it i'm in a serious mood right now <sighs> Yeah. Oh, no, not serious. I'm actually in a really good mood. I've been having a lot of fun today. This is really a very important question that you have to answer before it's asked. Why should someone buy something from you? Critical question. Very, very important. Has a lot of relevance. And sometimes people start a business. And this isn't a bad thing, because when you start your business, you started with a bunch of assumptions because you just don't know. But they don't know the answer to this question. They think they know the answer to this question. But when you know the answer to this question, it can you go, you'll make money because if you can't answer that question and you put a product out and in this course, there's exercises designed for you to put a product out so you can understand you can do research. You can do evaluations, you can do surveys, you can ask people and you can put it out. And it's buckets. <clears throat> it's straight buckets. I'm going, uh, no, we really don't want that. Like, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, what well, I was telling you about, you know, one of the courses, because I'm going to have to redo my raffle. Uh, I'm going to do that today because nobody wanted one on one training in YouTube. They were like, bump that man we can give her something better we don't want that i had a lot of suggestions to other things that people wanted but no one wanted the youtube deal so I, I took it down now that's one of the core things about this course you put something out and if people go mm -mm, no we don't want that you need to listen i mean i could have just like tweaked it changed the headline but the whole thing is that people were just like mm, we don't really want that we don't want that. We want something else, but we don't want that. We know we don't really like that. And th that's cool. It is better to put something out and fall flat on your face than to put something out and just limp along for a year or two. I already know that that thing's just not going to work. Um, 
timing could be because there was a point in time that I probably could have I could have did it and made a lot of money but YouTube is matured and there's a lot of information out there and just like I told you for your task it had to be something that you never done before because when you get used to essentially to use an old adage of throwing mud on the wall and seeing what sticks you understand that your hands are going to get messy because as you're throwing that mud you, you something's going to stay on your hands and you just learn that the process of success isn't sexy, it's frustrating, and there's a lot of work involved. And if you can wrap your mind around that and not become disenfranchised, disenchanted, despondent, oh God, you know, it's been a week and I've been working on it and nobody is just ain't get over yourself. Some people have worked on their businesses for decades before they finally figured it out that why should someone buy something from me? I have seen and read accounts of people spending hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars before that question was answered. Until that question's answered, all you do, all you spend, you're spending your wills. Now, the thing is, if you spend your wills for a week or a month, that's not bad. Because you found out real quick that, hey, this is one of the reasons in this course. I'm like, don't go get an LLC. Don't print up business cards. Validate your business. Figure out if it makes money before you do any of that stuff. Then if it's making money, you could take the money that the business is making to pay for those things. And it doesn't come out of your pocket because the business is breathing. It's alive. It can do stuff. That's where you want to be. So. Now this is what we're this is where we are with the last leg of 30 days to $2500 is salesmanship you know communicating with customers and tribe building what I call it you know some people call it uh, customer list whatever you can do to get people to continually think about you 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 have to do this because I will tell you uh, one of uh, my metrics here and I'm going to drop my pants and show you my drawers. A lot of people, because this is how people buy my products. They initially come in and they're very impressed and they buy. Or they hang back for three to nine months. I've had a lot of people. It's like, yeah, you know, I found you a year ago. I'm just buying something. That is important information. And let's really talk about that. Today is March 13th. Someone finds me today. I have to keep doing stuff to stay on their radar because they may a not have the money, b may not have the interest, c may be very comfortable where they are in life, d just like oh out for entertainment. But by continually marketing, putting stuff out there, it pops around October and they get that pink slip. Oh dang, that guy Glendon, yeah, you know he helps people start businesses. Oh, I can find him easy. Oh, there's still video. Oh, he put something new out. Oh, that's how that works. Because one of my sales mentors said something that was very important. And I didn't really understand it because it was young in the mind. I didn't. He said, we need sales today. We needed sales yesterday and we'll need sales tomorrow. Because I was really frustrated with this client. And he's like, well, it's a long term deal. You know, stick with it. Because I was just like, I wanted to get in there, get the sale, get that check and be on to the next one. I didn't know how to groom deals at that point because you have to have sales for the day. And that's the reason uh, what we were talking about yesterday, you know, just to give you some more clarity to me, eBay is a hustle. Amazon is a hustle. Amazon FBA is a hustle. Uh, Craigslist is a hustle. Now, hustle is short term. This is something that you're going to do anywhere from a few weeks to maybe five, seven years. And it's going to top out. Um, I actually went on eBay and looked for a lot of people that I used to follow. When I was an eBayer, they're all gone. I don't know the metrics on Amazon, but you know we had our own fulfillment process using other eBayers. So I never really got too deep in Amazon FBA until a little later. And it's just really, really a tertiary situation for you to consider these things because this is what's happening and you know I've put up several videos and I haven't been wrong because the first video I put up last August saying that eBay's culling the ranks then they did it again and then they did it again right before the holidays 
and they're doing more stuff. They just put out an announcement that you no know, next holiday that you're going to have to offer free ship to and free returns, which is going to kill people operating on rates within margins. They're not going to be able to do it. It'll just and this is a way like if you have a job where they don't like firing people, but they reduce your responsibilities or pull you out the loop, they don't fire you. They just make you quit. That's what eBay's pulling. They're thin in the ranks for a reason. Now, Amazon, on the other hand, has a lot of trajectory. They're, they've built all these warehouses and they're they're having to show revenue and profits. So if you are doing Amazon FBA, you probably have a good five or eight years to milk that out. Before, because the thing is. What eBay's doing now, Amazon's going to do later. And it's not because they want to. Because you have to understand, what is Amazon? It's a publicly traded company. Sure, Bezos owns a whole bunch of the stock and everything. But understand, it's this new disruptive company. Everyone's like, no, it's not going to happen. Someone's going to come along and give Amazon a serious run for their money. It's coming. And when that happens, all hell's going to break loose. But until that happens, Amazon is the best thing going. It's not without. It's not a rose without thorns. But compared to eBay, it looks. I mean, those thorns are real tiny because eBay doesn't have thorns. It has spikes <laughs> and tentacles. And it would just mess you up. But back on topic, the magic trick is to get people to come to you. Because the thing is, you got to answer this question. See, on the first time I'm going back because this is totally different stuff I'm teaching you. This question, why should someone buy something from you? Once you figure that question out, it'll make you rich. And the magic trick is to get people to come to you. Because when they're coming to you, it's a different deal. It's a different sale. It's a different transaction. Because they are already 90% of where they need to be. <clears throat> with maybe a 10% failure rate if you say something stupid or you lift up your skirt and they're like, I don't like those legs. Those legs are really hairy and they're out of there. But this is where you want to be. Now, how do you get them to come to your campfire? Now, let's talk about campfire. Now, one of the things that I learned from YouTube and many people disagree with me, but my metrics for me, I will say for me, state different things that the more stories that I told, the more accounts that I put out, the more ribbons of humanity that I've let flutter into the breeze the more stuff i sold i mean time and time again this new thing that i'm doing which i wasn't going to do <coughs> excuse me it actually came from a conversation that i had with a friend who's going through what i went through i had no clue he was doing that when you're going to the labor pool it's because things are pretty tough you, you know, you can't wait two weeks to get that check. You got to get that. You're going to get some money right now. I mean, for someone right now who went out today and it's going to get paid, that money they made is the difference between having gas or not having gas, having a, a biscuit to eat tonight or not having a biscuit. That's a lot of people are there. So with campfire, you have to have something and you can do this with any product, any service, something that brings people to you, because the thing is. You know, I, I, I love I love the story of Waffle House. You know what it is. It doesn't really change that much. But people go there because of the story and because of the way that they call it. Scatter, smother, all this other stuff. I mean, it's just a story. It's an interesting story. For your campfire, this is something that you're going to build. And this is, you know, for those who weren't here the other day, <clears throat> you can do a hustle on eBay and Amazon and Craigslist, SEO marketing, Internet marketing. You can do one of those hustles and pay your bills. You know, pay the rent, put little Johnny in daycare. If little Johnny has to go to daycare, buy organic carrots if that's what you desire. A hustle will do that, and a hustle can earn you six figures. A hustle can earn you seven figures. Hustles are very, very powerful. However, hustles are short term. You're going to peak out because if you are, just give you an example, say you're an Amazon FBA seller. And you have now hit the $10 million mark in sales. Maybe you're pulling a net of $2 million. Maybe two, maybe two and a half to three. Or, you know, if, you, if you're wholesaling, maybe your net some um, $4 million. You have a few years like that. You become a different animal mentally. You really start to think. You start to question stuff because 
at that level, unless you just have some serious cash consumption habits, you've got seven figures in the bank. You can go to the beach and contemplate your next move. And then you start looking at the numbers. It's like, well, God, if I had my own website and I was just moving 25 percent of this, I would make more money with less work. You start asking yourself those questions. Um, so the thing is. Even if it's going well, you get to a certain point of success that you may move away from it or use it because, you know, some people use eBay as a dumpster bin. Like they have their website, they have their products and stuff they can't sell. I'll just throw it on eBay to get rid of it. You know, it's just a clearance sale, clearance rack. But, you know, with the campfire, you know, your unique selling proposition, your unique story, that thing that makes you different because... You know, with the campfire, because I went through several iterations of my YouTube channel. You know, at first it was storage auctions. Then I added the Craigslist and I added other stuff and I added stuff and then it switched again. And then now it's about starting businesses. It's always been about starting businesses, but it was specific to one type of business for the first 18, 19 months. And then I kind of added complimentary things because Craigslist goes with storage auctions like peanut butter and jelly. It's a very good fit. Amazon FBA, Amazon, all this stuff goes together. Now, what I'm doing is to actually sell my failure. Because going back to the stories I'm doing about the labor pool, as I, and this is the thing, when you just think about your life in very compartmentalized terms, you don't really think it's that remarkable because I don't know. I've told so many of my consulting clients the same thing. It's like, yes, yeah, so you didn't think that was that special because you live with it every day. You see it every day and it's become very benign, very pedestrian to you. But when you kind of shake yourself up and look at it, because it hit me, you know, it goes in there like as the stories come from the labor pool. I learned part of the furniture business by working for Horizon Pacific. It was a labor pool job. They got in there. They actually hired me on um, permanent for about mm, four months. I learned the difference of a manifest. I learned how much furniture was marked up because I worked in the warehouse. I got the manifest. We had to match the manifest up with the stuff that was on the floor. So I'm looking at the manifest and this teak cabinet from Indonesia, you know, the manifest is cost 185 price tag I'm putting on is $1,250. And I was like, whoa! And we could buy stuff wholesale there. Uh, there were some people, especially some designers, they were buying stuff and flipping that stuff all up in Buckhead. So, having all of those jobs gave me a ton of experiences really quickly. I was exposed to so many different businesses. Now, to give you the timeline, when I was in the military, I had three of those businesses. When I got out of the military, I had two businesses. And then there was this huge gap when I was just a regular working stiff. About eight years. Let's see. Six, seven, let's see. Uh, yeah, about, about seven, about seven years. And then I, I get these jobs, which are sales jobs. They're all outside sales jobs. And the last two, I was working straight commission. So... I count those last two jobs as my own business because I did a lot of my own side shit to make money. So from those last two jobs from to now, I've, pretty, I've been self-employed. But going back to the story, if you're on YouTube, you know there's a lot of crappy people on YouTube. And a lot of people copy the shit I do on YouTube and then talk shit about me in private chat. I have spies everywhere. It's a wonderful world. Then I thought, you know, going back to what I was saying about you know, my labor pool experience, which I wasn't going to do this. I wasn't going to write the Craigslist book, but this is about taking chances, getting out there and exposing yourself. I was like, damn, that's a unique selling proposition. <laughs> Never thought about it. Be unvarnished. I was freaking ashamed of it. Grown ass man doing all it. I was, it was a low point in my life. But now that I reframed it and I'm looking at it with a different mindset, it was like, oh, holy Batman, Shazam. That was like the magic jelly beans. You went through all of these jobs, met all of these people, saw all of this stuff. You got a lot of experience because I was always the special one that people were like, because I didn't say much. You know, they just told me to do something. I would do it. I didn't say, I was like, because, you know, I was trying to keep a low profile because I didn't really want to say, well, yeah, I used to work in this hospital and do all this stuff. And now, you know, I did some stupid, lost my accreditation. And here I'm here with you. Boo boo the fool. I want to talk about that. 
But looking back, all of those experiences is the reason I was successful with business five through 10. So, you know, it counts. But your campfire is having that thing. So essentially, you can sell your failure, especially if you've overcome it. If you overcame it, it's like I failed, but this is how I got around it. You are become a solution driven person. People like that. Look at the people that we celebrate in our culture. Mike Tyson, broken person. 50 Cent, former drug dealer. Jay-Z, former drug dealer. Michael Milken, junk bond trader, went to the uh, federal prison for financial crimes. It's like you can fail, but as long as you fail big and massively, people want to talk to you because you're interesting. So my, my thing to you, if you're going to fail, fail large. I mean, I mean, you know, if you're going to fuck up, make it up big fuck up because that's what gets you put on the more you fuck up we used to have the same in the military fuck up to move up <laughs> it just happened you see this guy that's like he got promoted really him she got because you knew what they did and you were trying to, you were doing what i call stasis judgment and many of us are guilty of this and i work hard to not be that way stasis judgment is a person makes a mistake in 1992, and here it is, 2014, and you are still judging that person on that mistake. People do it all the time because one of the biggest falsehoods is that people don't change. People change all the time. They may not change in the manner that you want them to, but they change all the time. So all of this stuff is about you know building your campfire because your campfire, your fire is going to come from you, what you did, the path that you chose to walk in life. That's what your campfire is coming from. Nowhere else. It's coming from there. Now, this is really cool. People need a reason to come to your your campfire. They need a damn good one. Think of yourself. Why don't you go see certain movies? Why don't you uh, participate in certain parties? Because well, those places don't have a good enough reason for you to show up there. That's why you don't go. So look at your behaviors of why you don't do certain things and you will have the secret sauce, so to speak. Do you know how many companies were started out because the founder was frustrated with something and could not find it? So they made it. There's a guy posted in Hustle University. He couldn't find the appropriate artificial limbs because he was a you know he did dirt bike so he needed a really sturdy artificial leg so he couldn't find one he made one and created this million dollar company that happens all the time so your frustration may be your fortune so you know those things that are frustrating you they're frustrating someone else and if they're frustrating enough people there's money in your frustration so part of that is coming up with a reason for people to come to your campfire a good reason is hey i had this problem and i solved it Oh, there's like, oh, wait a minute. There's heat over there. Look at that. Oh, look at the fire. It's so pretty. Those type of things get people to come to your campfire. Fuckery. Uh, on my Facebook page, I do a lot of testing. And I post just images with really no explanation just to see the response rate. It's amazing. I can post a well-crafted uh, entry about business. A few people gravitate because that message is for them. But let me put some fuckery up or I'm working on some fuckery. People come running with plates. It's like my plate's empty. I want some fuckery. You got fuckery. I want some of that fuckery. And, you know, all right, and I just get my spatula and put some fuckery on their plate and they're there. So fuckery brings a lot of people. What's that uh, song? My milkshake bring the boys to the yard. Fuckery, milkshakes, whatever. And you have to really kind of figure it out. And I'll say this slowly because every time I mention the book, people are like, hey, I didn't get that predictably irrational by dan airily go to amazon you can get it economically the book will help you a lot with this because people don't make decisions based on what you think they will you really don't you you yourself don't and when you read this book you're like oh god guilty oh my god i'm, I'm like that person because our emotional state that's why you know the hustler's mindset working on that mindset once you get your mindset together your world's going to come together and if you are not in control of your mindset, it's very hard for you to control your life. 
which goes to this, the reason people need to come to your campfire. You can fix yourself. That's an easy thing. You can't fix other people. So it's almost like, what's that movie underworld where it's like you live you know the vampires against the werewolves it's like you're a vampire and you're living in one world but you have to deal with the werewolves as they are in their world so it's like you can be clean and you can be mentally healthy and you can be a person of, of living a life of design and intent but you're dealing with werewolves and you got to give werewolves the raw meat like they want it or they're not going to eat it and that was a hard lesson because that comes from like the 48 laws of power think what you like but act like the masses because you will be punished unless you have amazing charisma and internal fortitude. Because I put out a lot of things that are not really popular and it's just my mindset and personal philosophy. But I I am more mentally strong than I've ever been in my life. And that's something that hit me about this last year. Because things don't bother me like they used to. And you know, the meditation helped with that. But having direction and goals and purpose helps tremendously with that focusing on doing things to be happy because happiness is an inside job happiness is something that is earned it's not given to you or something you can find it's usually something that's earned long-term happiness and i'm not talking about you know you see a comedy show and you're laughing that makes you feel good happiness is very closely related to contentment where you're just sitting around and you just smile because you're happy to be alive that's what I'm talking about. That kind of happiness. So with your campfire, you got to have some bait. You got to have some you got to have some jelly beans or something, maybe some donuts. You got to have something to get them to your campfire. And that something's going to come from who you are. Now, sometimes when the path is not clear, it needs to be illumination. And this is marketing. You're marketing your campfire. You know, if you got a big bonfire and it's roaring and people can see it from miles around, People are just going to come out like, look at the fire. Look at the pretty fire. You know, that Eddie Murphy skit with Uncle Gus and Aunt Bunny. <laughs> Google Eddie, uh, Eddie Murphy Delirious. You got to watch the whole thing. It's classic. You, you have to really think about it. Because once again, once you start figuring out what the werewolves want, then it's like, okay, what's going to illuminate a path for werewolves? And when I say illuminate, I'm not talking about light, even though I have the lightning bulbs up there. I'm talking about understanding. Because when you try to feed people a concept that their mind is not ready for, they're not going to digest it. They may hate you. They may ridicule you. They may talk about you. So the illumination is understanding. And sometimes you just have to put it out there very bluntly. Sometimes you have to put it out there very softly. But the path has to be illuminated and it has to be like, bam, I'm here. And sometimes the illumination is just two torch lights at the beginning of the path to let people know there's a path there. Marketing is very, very important. Now, keep your minds out the gutter. But it's time to get in bed with your customers. And getting in bed with your customers is, what the hell are they going through? Because I'll give you the trajectory of Conundrum Publishing, which now is Conundrum Media. When I wrote that first storage auction book, I knew what people who were new to the business would go through because I used to play with them. I know I made I made one newbie spend about three grand on junk. Never saw him again. Never saw him. That's where you hear a little story. There ain't nothing but junk in there, man. Now, you know, there's nothing but junk. When you had someone with experience leading you down a bad path with gusto, it leaves a bad taste in your mouth. You don't want to come out. So I knew there was a market. I didn't know how big the market was. I did my research and I was like, okay, how many storage auctions are there in the country? So I went to do the research and discovered there was 55,000 facilities across the country. So I said, okay, hmm, 55,000. They have three auctions a month. That's 180,000 auctions. So that's that's like a million auctions a year. So, hmm. so I whittled it down. That's OK. If I could sell like 10,000 books, because with that many auctions, there was a customer base there. Didn't know storage wars and auction. hunt. I didn't know that shit was coming. And I was doing well before those shows came on. I was making enough money to live on before those shows came on. And then when those shows came on, it just exploded. But with getting in bed with your customers, 
you gotta go ahead and it's like, okay, what makes you buy? What pulls your trigger? Like, you know, there's this big discussion about Amazon Prime right now. And, you know, it's going up to 99 bucks, and some people are suing Amazon because they feel that they were defrauded. And to me, these people are silly because they don't know how to comparison shop. I buy a lot of stuff on Amazon. Everything I buy isn't always Amazon Prime because if I do the math and I go to Amazon Prime, and it's like, okay, Amazon Prime, yeah, I get the two-day shipping. It's $80, but this other seller is selling it for $40 plus $8 shipping. I'm going over there, and I'll just wait. Is You know, that's how I shop. So... It just virtually anything that's on Amazon, if it's in Prime, there's usually someone else selling it somewhere else. And just do do the research and crunch the numbers, and you won't pay too much. I think it's foolish that they're suing. It's entitlement mentality. But you have to really start to understand this stuff. Like I know what makes me buy certain things. I know what will make me drop fifteen hundred bucks on a webinar or a seminar, which will you know get on the plane, rent a hotel, do all this stuff, and. When I discovered that about myself, it became easier to sell to people who are like me, but everyone's not like me. So I had to learn how to sell to people who are not like me. Just to be blunt, there are people who are very motivated. They're very hungry. They want a better life and they don't have two nickels to rub together. And what I do for those people is the YouTube channel. I mean, I'll tell you right now, if you sat your ass down and watched a bunch of those videos, you learn how to make money for free. So there's something for those people. And I had the big fight. And as you business owners will see, you'll get people who want your best for the least. And they'll try to fight with you about it. And the thing is, that goes back to what is your value? What is your value? So you got to understand your customer, but you also have to understand yourself. And you have to put parameters on what you will and what you will not do. Because you'll drive yourself crazy because I put a video up on YouTube. You can't be all things to all people. It's not going to happen. All, that's the that's probably the quickest way to f- failure there is. So, you know, getting in bed with your customers. And we're going to get in bed with some customers, too. And I'm not going to even go expand on that because it could get real dirty. But you've got to figure out the inducement. And that's going to take work on your part. For you, your unique selling proposition, your campfire you're going to have to figure out how your stuff resonates with your potential customer. I already know that I'm a very polarizing person. People either love me or I hate my ass. And I'm comfortable with that because the people who love me, they love me a long time. And the people who hate me, they hate me a long time. And both help me because the folks who hate me, they go around and they talk about me and they introduce their YouTube subscribers to me because it took one a long time to realize that he was making me money like a hoe on the host roll. I mean, you know, people would email us like he said all this stuff about you. And I was like, well, I'm not going to say anything bad about him, but I do have this product to sell. Yeah, and you'll like it. And he says, since you email me, I'm going to cut you a little deal, take a little bit off the top. So, you know, once you reframe your thinking and understand how all attention, you know, once again, from the 48 laws of power can help you if you don't become emotional a little scared little bitch or an emotional little bitch and go oh god they're talking about me and this is not to say that you're not going to be human and this is not to say that you're not going to feel bad but you've got to learn how to contain that and move forward and pull the profit the joy whatever value that's in that stuff out of it now with inducement you got to get inside of your customer's head and when i say your customer uh the people who buy soap are different the people who buy furniture certain types of furniture are different the people who buy jewelry different You've got to figure out how to get in their minds where they are for your products based on your campfire. And the reason I keep saying yours is because everyone's looking for this cookie cutter solution. And it has been my experience that when I do my own work, get my own metrics, my sales flourish. You know, you can learn from white papers. You can learn from other people's experiences. But until you put on the gloves, get in the ring and start boxing in that business arena, you're not going to know. You can assume all day long. But until you start mixing it up, you're not going to know. And one of the best ways to mix it up is to start getting inside your customer's mind, get your customer in bed and get them to your campfire. Get them to drink your milkshakes. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's right. Um. There's a lot of task in here, and the bull has come back. He disappeared for a few days, but he is back. This one's going to be real challenging. It's going to be a little slutty, a little dirty, and I think you're really going to enjoy it. You're going to call up your husband, wife, 
uh, SO is significant other and tell them you want them bad, real, real bad, like you never did before. You may even say something a little slutty on the phone and you need them to come home as soon as possible. Now, for the folks who's like, I ain't married, I'm mad at my husband, I don't, okay, you're going to move down to the next level. If you're single, chances are high you're dating. There may be someone on their radar. Call that person on the radar and tell them you want them bad. And how soon can you hook up? Now, you male, female, I don't care who you are. You're still going to do it because what this does is it's going to find it's going to pull something out of you that you didn't know they had in you because you're going to have a sense of empowerment if you do it and you're successful. Now, if you do it and you get blown off, no, you're not going to feel so hot, but you're going to learn because the thing is. This process is the same thing that you're going to do to get customers. It's the same thing. It's just you got to get in the habit of doing it. And I'm just giving you something fun to do because if you do this right, it, it should be fun. And then for the people like, well, me and uh, the husband or the wife are fighting, me and the girlfriend are fighting. Don't worry. Uncle G's got you. What you're going to do is use one of the exercises from 30 days to 25 hours. You're going to write a forgiveness letter or you're gonna write I want you to forgive me letter yeah you you hey you messed up I didn't do that I didn't I didn't make you mess up so you're gonna do that and then after you do that and then you're gonna say I'm taking this course <laughs> and this is one of the exercises and I really need your help sometimes just saying I'm sorry I need your help is enough because a lot of people in our society don't know how to say I'm sorry and they don't know how to apologize if you ever apologize to anyone like this well if I did anything you are an idiot and a fool because you're not apologizing you're trying to save face with fancy words a true apology is I'm sorry for what I did to you learn how to apologize and you'll learn how to forgive those two are closely closely related so that's your task that's one of them and I think it's going to be real fun. Now, <laughs> let's talk about how the world goes. Quid pro quo. Otherwise, no. What have you done for me or what can you do for me? It is the way of the world. As you go to other parts of the country, that is the economy. From the, from the man in the street to the top government official, everybody's like, hand is out. You want my favor? You want my influence? You want this what are you gonna do for me that's how the world works in a lot of ways but it has a problem it's very fleeting because the minute that you no longer have specific value for specific tasks for your quid pro quo you're out of there you're, it's just over you know the party's over um it, you know and you lose whatever that thing you have or whatever you have is not that valuable you're in trouble very quickly and it's a nerve wracking way to live. So what you want to do, you want to be the lighthouse. You want to have, and this is campfire lighthouse. You know, I got the light theme, son. I'm, I'm all over that. You want to be that beacon that people come to you because it makes them feel better. It gives them understanding. And this is long term stuff. This is, you know, very long term stuff because one of the amazing byproducts of the YouTube videos that I get frequently, sometimes two or three a day, sometimes with a few days go by, it's like, just found your channel and this is amazing. This is just what I needed. That is lighthouse type stuff. That's why I make so many videos that have to do with life and stuff because you never know where a person may be. And when I did the, you think you're not smart, uh, the uh, thing about college elitism there are many people who are very intelligent very capable actually feel like failures in life because they don't have a degree and what's really really funny because i had a close friend who was feeling that way let me tell you about my friend <laughs> makes ninety thousand dollars a year so um, put two kids through college paid for it has four homes paid for wife has three degrees she makes 40 grand a year. He feels like a failure. Because we still talk about it. He's still, yeah, you know, he's done all of this stuff. Because he's extremely intelligent, 
But more importantly, he knows how to be active, how to take action. Did all this stuff. He feels like a failure because he doesn't agree. There are many people who dim their own light based on social expectations of what you should be, what you shouldn't be, what you should have, what you shouldn't have. You're a certain age. You should be this. You should be that. When you allow that those, you know, let's just be clear, like you shouldn't commit murder. That's a good social expectation that we all should adhere to. You shouldn't go out beating people up. That's a good social expectation. But when it gets into things where you make personal choices for how you live your life and you're not breaking the law, you're not hurting people, you're not beating puppies. You're adopting other people's expectations of what you should be versus doing the hard work of who you should be. And I've, you know, this stuff is very powerful because there are kids out there committing suicide because they don't fit the expectations of what people think they should be because, you know, they're young. You know, your mind doesn't stop growing until you're like 24, 25. Seriously. So when you say a kid is immature, not only are they immature physically, they're immature physiologically, mentally. And it's very easy to get in there and cause a lot of damage. So you, you have to be really, really careful about guarding your sandbox and really working hard on building your life of intent and design because when you become the lighthouse people just start popping up uh i can't tell you how many consults i got from videos that don't have a lot of views you know because there's uh 820 830 that you can see and people just look for something on youtube and they'll find that video i got one of the biggest consulting jobs from a video at the time it had like 400 views not a lot of views but it touched that person in the right place. So that's why you got to put stuff out and that's why you have to build and, you know, be active because, you know, sitting on the sidelines, like I'm going to do this when the time is right. You can miss out. You can miss out. Like uh, one of the things in the storage auctions, like I would tell people and no one wanted to believe it. You had to keep buying. Many people want to buy and hold and sell. Then once their money was right, as Kanye said, they go out and buy again. But while you're on the sidelines waiting because you're, you're, you're holding and selling, you're missing buying opportunities. I cannot tell you how many times I went out and I spent two and three grand on units that were going to maybe double the money or triple the money. And then that seventh, or that eighth, or that ninth unit was four, five, six thousand, and it paid for the rest of the units, which allowed me to do whole fire sale pricing and still be in the profit zone. But if you stop buying and get with that, I'm gonna sell all this. Then you know what you're doing is starting, stop, starting, stop, starting, stop. You don't have this continuum of activity, and it's it's you know it's for it was so hard to explain this to people. And one guy he got it. He really got it because the thing is, you know, storage auctions are still like, you know, taboo or weird things. But when you do evergreen service, it will equal long term income. It really will. It is amazing what it will do. <laughs> yes, right. Here's another one. Here's another task for you. That's why you have to have your pen and paper and write this stuff down. You're going to host a party. You're going to tell everyone what you do. But there'll be no pitching. This is a time you're just going to sit back, kick back, because I learned this because where I live there's always events and stuff and people are having parties and I go and I just sit back and I just talk about what I do. I'm not trying to sell nothing. It's just next thing you know, there's four people around me and they're like, really? Well, what's your number? Here's my business card. Once again, Lighthouse. I'm not asking for their information. They're giving it to me. All I did was present a nice campfire. This happens frequently because the campfire is warm and cozy. And you can do the same thing. You can do the same thing with what you have and where you are right now. You really can. Because understand, as I put up these videos of my life as a labor pool, as a day laborer, I didn't have these skills years ago. It was non-existent. I had the ability. I had the talent. Didn't have the mindset. Didn't have the belief, didn't have the activity. So just like I came from those dark places, you can come from wherever you are and do what I'm doing. Now, here's another thing you're going to do. Congratulations. You are going to write yourself a congrats letter or email for a task that's not done. Something that you're working on, something that you're going to work on. You're going to visualize yourself. It's done. 
and you're going to write yourself a congratulation. And for a lot of people, it's like, oh, God, they're so egotistical. A lot of people don't appreciate the good that's in them. And this is one of the exercises for you to appreciate it. I would suggest you start off with some small tasks like, you know, say your sales goal is to hit twenty five hundred bucks here and you have not Bam, you know, do that. Write the letter, write the email, send it to yourself and enjoy it and just program your mind for that success. That's another task for you. And with that, I am going to open up the questions. Yeah, it's still up there because I am not put it up there. Let's see. Let's what's going on in the question queue. <laughs> uh, Richard is at $35,976 in sales and he is now the new leader <laughs> in the group <laughs> you said you were going to do it Dwayne come on screw up I want more freebies that's funny uh, keep rolling it's an incentive to buy into the Facebook group if we need to catch up right Yep, yep. Uh, Dwayne, good observation about YouTube consults falling f flat. There's so many folks giving away ideas that it's not funny. For us, a raffle for two hours of content, a uh, consult time for four hours would be great. Yeah, I keep getting that one. Uh, Chad, I buy a raffle ticket for excess to 30 days to 2500 <laughs> Uh, Dwayne, yes, another good observation. I cannot pay for a consult now. I need to turn the corner with my established business. But your ideas and methods are solid, so I do foresee paying, paying for a few consults once I shot the uh, wolf at my door. <laughs> okay, Janet Jackson. <laughs> Hector, stasis gestures. I've been doing that to myself all of my life and I'm still critical of myself for decisions I made as a kid it is a hard thing to escape um, we talked about forgiveness early on because when you're doing that stuff you rob yourself of energy and the ability to move forward it's like an anchor in your mental life it just keeps you in one place forever because I was guilty of it you know judging people for stuff like I remember there was this girl, her name was Angela, and she was really, really poor. She was the poorest person of all of us. Because sometimes she would come to school dirty. I didn't realize just how horrible her life was until many, many years later. Because, you know, kids are me. And I saw her, and she was the ugly duckling that turned to a beautiful swan. And I saw her, and I knew who she was, and she looked at me, and she, like, went the other way. And I was mean to her, but I wasn't one of the meanest ones to her because a lot of people are mean to everyone. Everyone dumped on her. And I was like, Angela, you know, um, I know it's like really crazy, but I'm really sorry for the way I treated you. It was just really wrong. I didn't realize what you were going through, you know, until later on. I was just a stupid kid. That chick started crying. She was still carrying all of that stuff with her. And she was gorgeous. She really transcended well, but that's her outer shell. And the show was still the same. So it's that's the reason I, this whole thing with the hustler mindset is working on the mindset. Because that once you get that stuff together, you get this inner fortress that can help you handle all of this external bullshit. The way fuck up to move up. That confirms it. I work for a defense contractor and have a ton of military fuck ups trying to run the show. I've seen it. Screw up, set that shit on fire, lose half a million bucks, get a VP job. <laughs> it's kind of irritating, isn't it? Uh, Danica, I got predictably rational the first time you mentioned it a few days back, and it was fascinated. I am only in the first chapter, but I can't wait to test to see if I can create something that makes people respond the way that I already know would predictably make them choose to do what I want to. I mean, that book's powerful. A lot of people really don't get it. Eddie Murphy just rolled around on the ground. I love Delirious. I love Delirious. Let's see. I'm no late coming in, but on the website it said the seminar started at 5. I thought I was early. Can you please post these in the asymmetric problem commentary? Uh, yeah, it'll be there. 
Uh, Dwayne, the, the metric focus is great. I just signed up for an eBay store and found out I was doing better than I thought just from, from this webinar. I'm struggling to find time for the hustle, but I'm almost, uh, almost at $1,000 without really trying. What excuse if you have a full free day? We have a lot of people that have crossed that $2,500 boundary a long time ago. Some folks are going to do, and these are people who don't have the established businesses like uh, Fear the Heavy Hitters. They're going to do about 5000 within within the 30 days. Uh, David, I'd buy a raffle ticket to access for more fuckery, crazy Craigslist videos that are the ones that are not visible on YouTube. That's funny. Uh, they're going, yep, we carry that crap from childhood right into the future unless we dump the crap. We struggle to walk with it on our shoulders. An apology, too, from someone that's worth a million dollars. It really is. Yes, predictably irrational. You can get it on Amazon. Uh, Jelani, a trading platform collapsed on me, resulting in a loss of $300,000. I'm sure that some experience to sell and recovering from that position. Yeah, I've lost a lot of money, too. It never gets fun. Uh, Danica, side note, the cake picture is ridiculously hilarious. By the way, you can pronounce my name wrong in town. It's Danica? Okay, now I know. Sorry about that. This is what happens when you see people on Facebook. You just see stuff you don't know. You don't know. All right. It is four. Wow. Time is flying when you're having fun. All right. It's 451. I will hold tight for a few more minutes. I pay for half that cake. <laughs> That's cool. Let's see. Uh, I will put this up. Oh, it's still there. All right. This is what's going to happen for those of you who are here. At some point soon, I am going to turn what's now the lifetime to three ninety nine. That's going to be a year at some point. But right now, it's you, you buy it now, you'll get lifetime, and then the lifetime is going to go up to eight hundred bucks. So, just letting you know. And there it is. All right, I will be here tomorrow, four p.m. I'll send everything out, and I just want to say thanks to everyone that came out. And for those of you who are in the group, this will be up tonight or in the morning. And with that, this is Glendon Cameron, and I'll see you on the good side. Pretty fast, I guess, because I took a little break.